hope you enjoy today's message on Acts chapter 2 verse 38 preaching channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit the bell to help us grow. I love that practice. Amen. What a great tradition. And I still didn't get my apple box where I could see. But again, I'll get out of here as quick as I can. Get to where you can... Uh, I can see you. It's not so much you seeing me. I want to see you. And uh, I am uh, vertically challenged. And it's it's got me so, you know, I just have such anxiety because I'm short, I'm fat, I'm bald-headed. I have all... I have all of the negatives that one man can have, but and so I just I, I have a hard time facing anybody. I can't even speak in front of people. <laughs> the spirit of Bishop Booker getting on me. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> no, uh, what a privilege it is to be here tonight. We have a job to do. How many is ready to work? Are you really ready to work tonight? We, we sermonized a little bit here this morning, preached a little bit here this morning, but we got some work to do tonight. So why don't you be seated, let you catch your breath before we get right to work. Uh, while you're, while you're getting, getting settled in there, let me say how good it is to have uh, our dear friends, uh, the kings with us. There's nobody in the world that Frankie and I love any more than Johnny and Judy King. Uh, we love them very much. They are some of our dearest and closest friends We've been halfway around the world together, and uh, hope we can go the other half, and uh, that'll be great, and we love them so very much, and um, I told Pastor Joel Booker, I said, I, maybe do I get a bonus for preaching to half of the EC of the Worldwide Pentecostal Fellowship? <laughs> um, but he said no, so... I'm not going to preach to them. I'm just let them sit over there and and uh, preach to all of you great people. What a great church! What a wonderful, wonderful time that we had last year and this morning. We got off to a good start, and I feel like tonight is going to go to the next step, the next level. How many are ready to go to that next level? We can never digress. We can never go back. We all want to go forward. How many of you want to go to the next level? How many of you are prepared? How many of you are prepared to increase your contributions to the kingdom of God? Let me see your hand. I'm looking for you. How many of you are prepared? You come into this building tonight prepared to go beyond whatever it is that you've done last year. You have purposed in your heart, I'm going to go beyond that. Section A, I'm looking at you. These other people doesn't exist right now. How many of you in section A have it set in your mind and in your heart that you're going to do more this year than you did last year? Let me see your hand. I'm looking for you. Looking for you. I don't care if it's nothing but a, but a dollar or $10 or $20 or $10,000. You're going to do more than you did last year. Section B. This is for me, not you. How many of you have come prepared tonight? You're going to do more than you did last year. Hold your hand up. Let me look at you. Section C. The C section. Hold your hand up. More than you did last year. Section D. You come prepared tonight to do more than you did last year. E. F. In the back. All of you back there somewhere in, that's not in a section. You come planning to do more this year than you did last year. What about the platform? You're going to do more than you did last year. We are going to set a new record tonight. Come on, applaud yourselves. Applaud your brothers and sisters. We're going to set a new giving record for Endon Lighthouse Church. Because you're going to give more than you did last year. Last year, I understand, maybe the record offering in the history of this church. Correct? It, $720,000 we received here last year. I believe we can top a million this year. How many believe that? 
Not one person, not. Can you put that picture up for me, Brother Booker? Put that picture up there for me. I don't care if it's an east, west, north, south direction. I want the picture of the building, if you don't mind. Give me that one looking at that lighthouse. There we go. Somebody ought to stand up and shout because we're going to do it. Come on, shout now. Don't wait till the battle's over. Go ahead and shout about it right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. We got time. We're going to rejoice. Hallelujah. Turn around to two or three people around you. Give them a high five and say, we got victory in this house tonight. We're going to do it. We're going to go to that next step. Hey. I got, a, I got a little word. I had lunch with Pastor today, and he's looking for a magic number. He's, he's hoping. He said, man, if we could get to a million dollars, we could go ahead and get started in 24. We're going to shock the pastor, and we're going to kick the devil in the mouth, and we're going to hit a million dollars tonight. Come on, somebody. If you believe God's going to help us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I leaned over to Brother Barry, and I said, well, how much do you think we can get tonight? He's like, well, you know, we need it. It's, it's kind of, and I said, well, what do you think? What do you, he said, well, he said, maybe, maybe we, and I said, you believe better tonight than you did this time last year. I believe it was one year and a month ago that we were here. Was it February or January? Okay, we were here. We were here last year, almost a year ago to date. And, and God blessed us. It was amazing what God done. I, I, I'll just be honest with you. I'm on the platform and, and pre-service, and, and we're dancing and we're shouting like we were tonight. And that, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me and said, you're going to get the largest offering in the history of this church. Combined giving is going to be over a million dollars. I told Pastor Booker that. And I think it was like I could have got, I, I don't know if I could have shocked him anymore if I would have threw a bucket of ice water on him. He was just like, right in mid huckabuck. Breaks on. He, did, he didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't know what I was talking about. But God knew what we were talking about. Because this is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not going to be underfunded. He's going to use you and you and you and you and you and you and us. Together, we are going to accomplish this. Inland Empire needs this lighthouse. I said the Inland Empire needs this lighthouse. And you know whose responsibility it is to do it? It is every single man, woman, boy, and girl in this room tonight. It is your, it is your opportunity to get to invest in the best investment you'll ever invest in in your life. You see that building? You see it up here on these screens on the side? That is the best investment. It's better than anything Wall Street's ever gave out. It's better than anything, uh, any pyramid scheme is better than any scam this is the real deal this is where you want to put your money this is where you want to stake your future be not deceived god is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap if you sow sparingly you'll reap sparingly but if you sow bountifully you'll reap bountifully how big do you want your blessing to be You can sit down anytime you want to, but I'm not going to tell you to. My dad used to say you look better standing up. If you've seen me on my phone, I wasn't just playing on my phone. I had to go back and talk to my wife just for a second whenever was going on and my wife said what are you doing on your phone 
I said, I've been getting texts. She said, well, I'm, I figured that. It's something wrong. I said, no, nothing's wrong. I've just been gathering data, and I don't want it to be old data. I want it to be fresh. I want it to be hot off the press when we talk about it. How many want to hear a few good things that God's been doing? The Bible said we're made overcomers by the word of our testimony. Now, I said I wasn't going to ask you to sit down, but if y'all will, just give me a minute, and I'll let you stand back up. In fact, right now, how many of you were in the service here last year? You see your hand. If you were in the service. See, there's a lot of people that wasn't here. We, was, we had a little outbreak of COVID, and Bishop wasn't even here. He was listening. He had a knee surgery. So here, here's, here's what I want to do. Everybody... Everybody over in this far wall, if you were blessed by what you contributed, I want you to stand up. Section A. If you were blessed by what you contributed last year, Section B, likewise. Don't play. This is, you're in the church. Don't lie. Section C. If you were blessed by your contribution, this section, D. E. F platform in the back on the organ sure you can now look around how much more evidence do you need we're not talking talking in hypoth hypotheticals here tonight we're not talking about what could be we're talking about what has already happened you are blessed the majority the vast majority of the people that gave in last year's offering are standing here living proof examples of what god will do if you will sow into his kingdom you can be seated i love to take some time pastor has told me a few stories I mean, there's been some incredible stories that's come out of this, this congregation of what God has done. I'm talking about not just a few dollars. I'm talking about tens of thousands of dollars of blessings God has poured out into this congregation because of your willingness to contribute to the kingdom of God. Whenever you get involved in the kingdom of God and you start financing the kingdom of God, God will open the windows of heaven in your behalf and he will pour out blessings that you can't contain. You know, but I think sometimes what happens is, is we, we get to a point and we know that the blessings are, are, are there and we know that God's going to do it. We know that he will. He said there's nobody in this life. He said in this life that if you give up houses and lands and families and so on and for the kingdom's sake, he said in this life, will I not give it back to you a hundredfold? That's the word of God. That's what Jesus told his followers. He said, if you give it up, I'll bless you with it. It is an immutable law of God that he will, he will reward you for your contributions. But I think sometimes, if I could have my little prop tonight, I don't have corn this year. How many still got your corn? Bring me, just bring me, bring me the, I want the other end. I want to get it right. If I'm going to do it, I want the right end. Anybody know what this is? Say it loud. What is it? I'm hearing garden hose, water hose, hose pipe. But the big thing I'm getting is hose. I call it a garden hose. Can we do that? Everybody agree that it's a garden hose? Now, this hose is representative of you. Whenever you come to this church and you repent of your sins and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, and you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you begin to live for God I'm talking about all in you connect that in come help me brother Barry I want you to represent the other end of that hose okay 
you connect it over there. We got we to gotta get it connected somewhere. I don't know. Just, just get it connected. There you go. That's perfect. That's the right place. You get connected to an inexhaustible supply. How many of you know that there is no limit when it comes to God? There could come a day whenever you're talking to your banker that he says, I'm sorry, bud, we're all out of money. You could go to your neighbor, your friend, or your rich aunt or uncle and say, I need money. And they could tell you, I'm sorry, but we're all out. But whenever you are connected to God, there is no limit. <laughs> tell your neighbor, there's no limit. Say it like you believe it. There is no limit. None. None. If you're serving a God that is limited, you're not serving the right God. Because the God that we set, we serve and the God that we promote and the God we try to get you to fall in love with has no limit. And so it's connected to that kind of God. The blessings of God. He said... He told Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless you for a reason. I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. The problem with us is we get blessed and we start thinking that the blessing is about us. And the blessing is about us to a certain degree. But if you ever close this end off, tell me how much water is going to flow the only thing is how much this hose can contain it looks like a 50 foot 3 quarter inch hose to me is that about right where's my engineer at brother Pierce this is a 3 quarter inch 50 foot hose we could do the math and we could figure up the volume but whatever the maximum capacity would be, if you close this end off, this is the outlet. He is controlling the inlet. This is the outlet. If you close it because you want to keep the blessing, you will only have ever how much you can contain. Then you limit God. But if you could get the revelation tonight of removing the restriction and say, God, I'm just going to let it flow. And whatever you put in my hand, I'm never going to close it on it. I'm going to keep it open and I'm going to let it just keep flowing out. You know what? The hose will always be full. You will always have enough. But not only will you have enough, everybody that you are in close proximity to will be blessed because of your blessing. Can I tell you how many, there's a hundred thousand people in Rialto, there's a hundred thousand people that need revival. And if you cap the hose, if you stop up the outlet, they're not going to have revival. They're not going to be saved. They're not going to have a future. Maybe you need to come a little bit more central, brother. I'm sorry. I'm wanting to walk over here. There's some folks over here I need to preach to. Don't be giggling. It'll be you. But whenever you cap it off, you're limiting God. Now, I don't know about you, but I've read the book, and it's not good to ever limit God. God don't take too kindly to folks limiting him. He wants you to say, God, I'm open. Whatever you want to flow through me, I'm, I'm ready, I'm willing, I'm able, and I'll let it flow. Is anybody in this room ready to let it flow tonight? I said, is anybody in this room ready to let it flow tonight? You can hang on to it if you want to, but you're just going to have a stale, stagnant, limited supply. But if you can open it up, not only will it be a blessing to others, uh, but your own life will be fresh. Uh, it will be pure. It will be good. It will be right. Can I tell somebody in this room today, you are controlling the flow. It's always open on that end. God wants to leave it open for you. 
There are some extreme circumstances where God will cut it off. You understand that? Primarily, if you don't tithe and you don't give, God can cut the supply off. God's not going to bless people that are robbing him. It don't work that way. But if you, if you will tithe and if you will give, according to Malachi chapter 3, he said, he said, you just check me. You just try me. You want to talk about a challenge. What about all these challenges now? Man, they're challenging everything. Challenge you to put your grandkids' picture on milk jugs and stuff. I don't know what all they're challenging. It's everything they can come up with. A new challenge every day if you're into that world. I, I remember the first one that I got tricked into. It was the ice water thing. What was it for? Yeah. But what was it for, though? Y'all can all remember what it was, but not what it was for. What was it? Raise money for cancer, cancer? Yeah. ALS. It was it was to raise money for something. We can't agree on what it was. I can't remember. I'm gonna tell you why I can't remember. Because whenever my grandkids dumped a five gallon bucket of ice water on me, I lost about 25 years of memory, <laughs> and my hair fell out. <laughs> no challenges. Always a challenge. Uh, let's try this challenge. Let's do that challenge. And it's all gimmicks and stuff. Let me tell you something. God don't issue a challenge unless he can come through on his end of the challenge. He said, try me and see that I won't open your windows of heaven and pour you out blessings uh, that you cannot contain. Whenever God starts pouring it out, you, this hose that represents you cannot contain all that God is going to let flow into your life. Uh, how many is ready for an overflow? How many is ready for things to really begin to pour out in your life? I know, I know there's a lot of people that are skeptics uh, and there's a lot of people that are cynics. Uh, there's a lot of people that are critics uh, and all those other icks, but they're all icky to me and I'm not interested in them. All I'm interested is in this majority crowd that stood on your feet a while ago and said, God bless me for what I did last year and I want more. I want more. I want to take it a little further. I want to see more of the blessing. Uh, I want to see more of the overflow. problem is sometimes sometimes we get we get in situations how many have ever tried to wash your car on Saturday to get the garden hose out let me find a not too restricted seat all right ladies y'all gonna have to give me a little room I'm coming to wash my car And about the time I get around to the fourth tire, the water supply cuts off. And I'm like, what happened? Just like magic, it disappeared. I had a good flow, but by the time I get all the way around here, something happened. That man's looking to figure out what it is. He knows already what I'm talking about. Hey, you, you know what happens? You get a, you'll get it, this thing kinked up. You'll get a restriction in the line. You want to take a picture? Let me pose. <laughs> you, you get the restriction. It's caught under a wheel or a tire or it's caught in the, in the flower bed or in the bush or somewhere. It always finds a place to get hung up. And it's so aggravating, frustrating. Because a restriction gets in the hose. I think, I think when I fly home on Tuesday, I'm going to take this hose. Because if that plane crashes, I'm going to jerk this hose out of the overhead compartment. And me and my wife's going to grab a hold to it. And before we hit the ground, it's going to hang up on something. I'm pretty sure of that. Don't yours always get hung up? Anytime you try to water the flowers, it gets hung on something and the water stops. What's going on? Can I tell you, your life is the same way. 
You have to go back daily, routinely, day in and day out and make sure that there's no restrictions uh, because you are controlling the flow. If you let uh, the restrictions come into your life, you will not be able to bless others that need blessing. You see, this is not really about money. People think whenever you preach like this, this is about money. Now, the Bible does say that money answereth all things. See, it's hung up right now. The Bible says that money answereth all things. It also said the love of money is the root of all evil. Right? You can't fall in love with money. Money is a utility. It's an end. It's a means to the end. It's what you're trying to get. We're trying to build that. How many are excited about that? All it takes is, is doing away with a few Starbucks. Oh, Lord, that's become a sacred cow. Can't say anything about coffee. People don't want to do without their coffee. Starbucks isn't any good anyway. Let's start an argument. Starbucks. The only way you can drink Starbucks is if you get enough sugar and milk in it. Then it's, what is it? it nothing. I mean, you don't even taste the coffee anyway. It's just stuff. Frou-frou stuff. You like frou-frou coffee? So, I texted a couple men in my church that have recently got in church. I told you a little bit about them last year. Well, it's just now starting to happen. They're starting to get all of the kinks worked out of their, their hose. They're, they're, getting, they're getting it where it's lined out, straightened out, where it can really flow good. Here we go. Am I blocking? I'm sorry. I text a young man in my church. He got the revelation of who Jesus is. Pentecost Sunday, 2020. That's not too long ago. Last in 2021, he made $40,000 in a year. Even in Mississippi, it's kind of hard to make it like that. His wife was a public school teacher, and she made about that much. So they had a combined income of about $80,000. They had four kids trying to build a house. He never complained. He never done anything out of the way. He tried doing something different. He bought a mobile shred business. Truck goes around to lawyers and doctors and places where they have confidential information. And they would bring their, their confidential documents out there and it would shred it up. He thought it was going to be the, the ticket. It was going to do good. Well, one day it caught on fire. And there's nothing that burns like shredded paper. The fire department couldn't do anything about it. His truck burned down. Now, a lot of people would have quit right there. A lot of people would have said, if that's the way it's going to be in the church, I'm, I'm done. I'm not going to do it. We're not talking about a person that has a PhD. We're not talking about somebody that is connected to generational wealth. We're talking about a common working man, good guy, hard worker, but everything that could go wrong had gone wrong seemingly after he got in church. But you see, whenever you're sowing and reaping, just because you come into the kingdom of God does not mean that some of the, some of the crop that you planted is not going to come to fruition. Some of it's going to come up. You're going to have to deal with some of it. 
And it was. It was happening in his life. He was dealing with a lot of his previous lifestyle. So he came to me one day. He said, Pastor, I know what you preach. And he said, I want to do it right. And he said, I want to do something that God will bless. Well, in the South, we have hurricanes. And we just had a major hurricane and through Hope Corps and a vision that Brother King and myself worked together to create, <laughs> along with others. Uh, we began to load disaster relief trailers and take uh, stuff into South Louisiana. This young man went with me. He was, he went along. And on that trip to help other people that he had never met, didn't know, he got an idea. He said, I believe I can roof houses. So I asked him, I said, can you roof? He's like, I know how to nail nails. I'm like, well, that's a little bit different than roofing. He's like, but I can figure it out. And I didn't want to discourage him too much, but I really did have concerns. I didn't really know for sure if he wasn't making a step in the wrong direction. He didn't know a whole lot about it. He'd worked around construction. He really didn't even know how to measure a roof, how to tell how many squares of shingles it would need. But there was the demand. They needed roofs on their homes. Hundreds of homes, thousands of homes, tens of thousands of homes. So he started making preparation. He went and got some stuff together. And he started going. And we're talking about a man that made $40,000 the previous year. He met a man that used to work with him in construction. He said, hey man, do you have a, a, a roofing crew? He said, as a matter of fact, I do. He said, I'm leading a roofing crew. He said, I've got several men that help me. He said, would you be willing to go to Louisiana and do some roofs for me? He said, I'd be happy to go do some roofs for you. We need work, but we don't have the capital. We don't have the resources. We don't have the contacts. We don't know what to do. He said, I'm your man. That started. They went down and started doing roofs. And the next thing you know, he goes from being a guy that don't know anything about roofing to being one of the premier roofers in that part of the country. He now employs over 60 men. And I, I text him, I let, I let you, you read the text. That text just came in a while ago. The text came in after he got out of church at our, our church tonight. He said in 22, he made $3 million from 40,000 to 3 million whenever you get the kinks out of the hose. What changed? Nothing changed about him. Nothing changed about his abilities or talent. He just said, I'm going to be a part of whatever the kingdom needs. I'm going to supply it. Did I tell the story about his wife in the school? I did not tell it. Let me tell you one of the, one of the callous, one of the, one of the kings that was in the hose was he was nervous about money. He didn't know. And so his wife is a highly qualified public school teacher. And uh, her and her daughter, uh, daughter, she's got three little girls. They, they came to the Rock Church in Laurel and they started living uh, a, a, an apostolic lifestyle. They started dressing like apostolics and they started being criticized and made fun of at school. She said, I started noticing things about the curriculum that I had been teaching for years. Not just the last few years, but what I've been teaching over a while was not, was not in alignment with the Word of God. And she came to me along with two or three other teachers that are public school educators, and they said, Pastor, we need a school. We don't have a school of any kind in our church. We need a school. So she started talking to her husband about it, the $40,000 a year man. And he's like, well, honey, 
if you quit, that means I only make forty thousand. You make forty thousand. That's gonna that's gonna be that's gonna be hard. And plus, we we're gonna lose all of the state benefits. We're not gonna have this, and we're not gonna have that. And he goes through all that. So let's pray about it a little bit more. What he was doing was this. But she was going. Argh. But she stayed and prayed and kept on praying. She was the one that God forgave forty thousand dollars of student loan debt. God blessed her to get that done. They've been denied many times, but she got that. But in the middle of all that, but in the middle of all that, you know what? Her husband gets this roofing idea. She made $40,000 a year. He went to men's conference. Brother John Shumate was preaching, and it was, we were hosting it at our church. And God got a hold of him. He went home, and he knocked on the, the they were living in an RV. They had started building a home and ran out of money, run out of credit. And so they were living on 40 acres of property in an RV with a partially built house. Couldn't get a loan, couldn't get money. He, knocked, he walks up to the RV and he, and he pulls on the door and his wife says, wait a minute. She comes to the door and she opened the door. She had been praying. She opened the door and he's crying. He's standing at the door crying. He's saying, honey, whatever you feel to do about your job, if you want to start a school, that's okay. Go ahead. I've just been convicted in my heart. I want you to go ahead and do it. Can I tell you, that was, that was on Saturday after the men's conference on Saturday afternoon. Monday morning, he gets a call. He went and measured one job and that one job paid him $40,000 bonus above and beyond all of the expenses. God said, if you'll get the kink out of the hose, I'll give you more on one week's work than your wife can make in a year. You got to start figuring out what's got the restrictions in your life and start moving those things out of the way. Some of you are sitting here and you're looking at that building and you're saying, well, we don't really have to have that. We don't really need to do that. And we're just going to have to give more money. Look, it's not that God needs your money, but you need God to take your money and you need God to bless it, multiply it, press it down, shake it together and dump it into your life in a way that you can't even contain it. God don't have to have me, but I sure want him to employ me. God can do it without me. He can use widows and he can use ravens and he can use all kinds of things to get his, his mission accomplished. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? God pick me. I want to be a part. Let me be a part of it. Use me. I want to be that host. Flow through me. Let it flow through me because if God's blessings flow through to this community and they flow through you, you're going to be blessed and they're going to be blessed and you're going to have more than you need and they're going to get what they need. It never stops never quits I told you that story before I told you another story because some of you struggle to believe that but I, I had another man in the church he, he is a he owns a civil engineering company so it is a company and it was it was doing uh, okay he had about 35 or 40 employees and uh, they were making about four million dollars a year that's that's not that's not chump change that's pretty good and uh, I'd be happy with that. How about you? Anybody be happy for four million? I would be until I figured out how to get five. <laughs> and so he 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 came, and he was he was he got the Holy Ghost. I'll never forget the, the one of the first times he came to church. He said he said Pastor. He said I, I just want to I want to. He said I hear about y'all talking about God. He said, but I want, I want to, I want to see God. I want to, I want to, I want him to be a, 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 a tangible God. He said, I'm a rational thinker. I got to be able to put my hands on it, feel it, see it, know it. He said, you know, y'all talking about him somewhere out there in heaven somewhere. And, and, and I want him to be close. Well, God started opening things up for him. He's the guy I told about the lumber. Do you remember the story I told about the lumber and how he was working at the church? God gave him the lumber to build a house. Well, they're going to break ground on that house this summer. They're going to build a house. Oh, yeah, and by the way, the guy that, the guy that was living in the RV in an unfinished house... You know what? God blessed him with enough money that during this last year, they completed that 6,500 square foot custom home on 40 acres of land completely debt free. Completely debt free. They moved in at Christmas time with no mortgage. 
The only thing changed is he come to church, got the Holy Ghost, got right with God, got his life in alignment with God, and God started opening the windows of heaven for him. Can I tell you, God is not, if God can do it in the poorest state in the union, y'all have heard me say this, I say it all over America, and everybody laughs every time about it, but the only place that, that Mississippi ranks number one is in obesity. That's the truth. Everything else, we're dead last. Dead last in everything. But I'm telling you, if you don't, Brother King's been there, Brother, Brother uh, Booker, Elder Booker's been there. If you don't think God will bless people in the worst economy in America, you just come to Law, Mississippi and see what God's doing. God is not short. God is not slack. There is nothing that limits God. In the worst place, in the worst environment, all the negatives you can add up, God still comes through day in and day out. It don't matter to God. God ain't worried about your statistics. So, brother, I almost called his name. I probably shouldn't call his name. But he, he came to me and he said, all I ever wanted to do was just help a church. He told me about a couple of heroes in his life. He said, I want to I be, be that kind of blessing to the kingdom of God. He said, I heard about him right a man, an apostolic man writing a million dollars check to missions. He said, I want to do that. And I'm like, we're not that far from it. You know, you're making $4 million a year. You know, we can probably figure out how to help you write that check. <laughs> so, like Brother King said, I think it was. Is that what you said? Put, I put my money where my mouth was or something like that? I think it was you. Somebody said that tonight. I need to remember because I don't get, the, get that too often. <laughs> but guess what happened? He started doing it. He started, he started giving. He started taking care of business. He started doing what he said he was going to do. And you know what? God said, hey, if you're willing to do it, I'm willing to do it. And so they went from 35, 40 employees to 65 or 70. Income started going up. Things started happening. I texted him before church. Well, well, when church was going on, he texted me back. They were in church. And I texted him. I said, I want to know the difference from last year to this year. He said, well, last year, last year, we were, we done $4 million. I said, I want to know what you done this year. He said, as we speak, we are under contract to $42 million. That was kind of like, uh, that was big numbers, preacher. That's pretty big numbers right there. I don't know about that. I don't know if I could really get on board with all that. Well, let me tell you how one, one job, one single job, this man said, I want to be a blessing. He came to church. He brought, he brought the bid sheet to church. This is how we do it. We're just that crazy. We believe in praying over everything. If I'm fishing, I'm praying for a, hold on now, hold on. I'm not praying for a bite. I'm not praying for a little fish. I'm praying for a big fish. I'm praying to catch a big fish. Some people go hunt. Lord, let me see a, a, a deer. Let me, let me see a trophy. No, I want, I want the trophy in my deep freeze. I don't act like that. If I'm going to pray for something, I'm going to pray for something good. Reminds me of a story I heard by Reverend Ike. Y'all remember Reverend Ike? He was in New York City. He was, he was, he was quite a character. His, his, one of his lines was, you can't lose with the stuff I use. And, you know, I don't want my pie in the sky. I want my pie here. That's, what, that's some of his little sayings. I was listening on AM radio laying up in the back window of my dad's 68 Pontiac Bonneville. I was laying up there, and I was probably eight years old. This was before you had to be strapped in, buckled up, and locked down, and helmets on. We were just going to Little Rock. And I was laying up in the back seat, and it was middle of the night, and my dad had Reverend Ike on the radio. And the lady came up and said, Reverend Ike, I want you to pray that God will bless me with a car. He said, you need a car? She said, yes, sir, I need a car. He said, okay. He said, what kind of car you want? She said, I just want any old kind of car. Just an old piece of car will do. He said, lady, 
If you come up here for me to pray for a miracle for an old piece of car, you might as well go and sit back down because I ain't going to pray for an old piece of car. If I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray for a Cadillac. It takes the same amount of faith to get a jalopy as it does a Cadillac. Somebody needs to raise your sights a little bit and believe that God can do it. Don't be... Whenever I say a man went from $4 million to $42 million in contract, don't let that scare you. Understand one thing. If you can open up the hose, if you can open up the supply line, God won't stop. God won't quit. It never ends. You are connected to an inexhaustible supply. And whatever the need is, God will supply it. <laughs> Y'all, how many, how many of you? got a card I'm checking I'm checking cards tonight section A I want to see your card hold it up I'm looking you got your card let me see it see it see it, see it. section B I'm looking for your card see last year some of y'all young ladies didn't get one y'all remembered I called you out on it too didn't I hey God's got to start somewhere he started with brother King with 16 cents that was perfect, Brother King. You, we need, every time I take an offering, would you and Nan come and go with me and Frankie? That was a perfect intro. Where's that? Section B? Card? Hold it up. Section C? Card. By the way, Section C is the place where almost 150 new converts are setting in our church. We got Section A, B, C, and D. We don't have... And, F. And, and it's right there, section C. And, I, and, and you know what I'm playing off of, right? I said, this is the birthing section. How many didn't get a card? Y'all didn't get a card? Look, it doesn't matter. You can be blessed if you don't have but 25 cents. Brother King got his blessing with 16 cents. I don't want y'all to miss out on your blessing. It don't, it's not how much you give. It's the value of it. Don't be embarrassed because you may not have $10 to give every month or whatever. That doesn't matter. If you'll start with something little and let God do it, God's got to have something. God's got to have something to work from. They want cards. Somebody get cards. Anybody that didn't get, what about section D? Y'all get cards? Cards up. Anybody didn't get a card? Hold your hand up if you didn't get a card. You got guys over here that didn't get a card. Where's the ushers? Get them out. They're about to miss out on the blessing. I don't, I don't know. What happened, brother? Was you? You don't know what happened? Oh, you was up there? They didn't give them out up there? You don't know. You didn't see it. Doesn't matter. We'll get in. This is the last minute. You're getting in on the deadline. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about that. There was workers that come in and they agreed to be paid the same amount that people that worked all day. They got the same amount as people that got in uh, at the beginning. That got the same amount at the end. So it don't matter. For you getting your cards now, you're still going to get in on the blessing. Get it. We want you to be blessed. We're not... It's, it's not about God's going to take care of this church. Can I tell you something? I'm going to... You call me a prophet. You can call me whatever I'm saying. That will happen. That will happen. You know what is going to happen with me or without me? It's my opportunity to get to invest in it. You know what? Whenever you drive up on the parking lot and you drive up in front of that 70 foot, is it 70 feet, brother Booker? 70 foot lighthouse? Whenever you drive up on that parking lot or you're driving down the avenue over there, cactus, man, y'all got all kinds of flowers and buds and plants. That's y'all streets. I mean, somebody must have been in the horticulture. We're going to name this lilac. We're going to name this ash. We're going to name this. Y'all got all the names. Y'all took up all the botanical names in the dictionary on your streets. So if you're on Cactus Avenue, I believe you'll be able to see that 70-foot lighthouse from all over the area. And you know what you can do? You can look up there and you can be a little bit Holy Ghost proud and say, I am an investor in that. There are people that are walking around and said, man, I got in early. I got in with Tesla. Whenever before Tesla got popular, I got in on Tesla. I hope you sold out before it got 
unpopular, but you know, there's people that I got in on Tesla, I got in on this, or I got in on that. Let me tell you something. There is nothing that you can get in that you want to be in like the kingdom of God. If you can get in on this, uh, can I tell you you're sowing into something uh, that will keep giving uh, as long as you'll keep the supply line open, it'll keep flowing and it won't ever stop. You going to give tonight, man? Absolutely. You're not going to change your mind. I haven't talked you out of it. That 4 million to 42 million didn't scare you? Did it excite you? You believe if God done it for a guy in Mississippi, he can do it for a guy in California? Because God is of no respect of persons, right? God does not favor people in Mississippi more than he favors the people in California. God's people are God's people. Wherever you are, whatever culture, whatever your ethnicity is, whatever it is, you're the only one that can limit God. And you only limit him for yourself. You're not going to limit him for somebody else. If somebody's sitting next to you and saying, I'm just not going to do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to scoot over a little bit, but don't let it bother you. Don't let it bother you at all. Because God is going to bless you as an individual. He is not going to hold you responsible for somebody else that's sitting on the pew next to you that says, I don't believe all that. That's just crazy hype. The preacher's just talking noise up there. He's just trying to get my money. No, I'm telling you, the best investment you'll ever make in your life is sowing into the kingdom of God because people fail. I could not get through my email a few weeks ago for all the Bitcoin offers. What happened to that? You know, you know, the world always comes up with new ideas to how to, how to get rich. But I'm going to tell you, this is not about getting rich. This is about supplying the need for a lost and dying world. There are people all over the world. I sat, I sat in a meeting recently and there was a group of preachers. We sat there wringing our hands because we didn't have enough money to take care of the needs that are represented around the world. We, one looked at me and has been a missionary for a long time and he said it not, not happy. He said it with tears in his eyes. He said, we just cannot respond to all of the needs uh, that is in our world today. Can I tell you something? God's looking for somebody that can respond to the needs that are in the world. Let's start uh, with Rialto. Let's start across the street uh, and work our way across the ocean. Uh, let's reach our neighborhoods. Uh, there's 30,000 homes. Uh, y'all are 5,000 into it. I, I applaud you. I am happy for you. But what are you going to do tomorrow if everybody in those 5,000 homes show up where are you going to put them pastor you don't have a plan for that there's no way you can put if, if everybody in those 5,000 homes that's already been witnessed to in the first phase of, of uh, Rialto Blitz if just the ones you reach out to now if they show up next Sunday what are you going to do You see, the problem is we, 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 we believe God for things in, in that realm. But whenever it comes to putting the resources that God puts in our hands, we, we, start, we start holding back. and we start, we start kind of closing the hose off. I can't, I can't do that. I, 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 don't wanna, I don't want that. That may restrict my life a little bit. I, I, may, not, I may not be able to buy 25 pairs of shoes this year. I'm in the ladies section. The most dangerous place in my house is my wife's shoe closet. I'm afraid if I open that, open that, that if there, I'm going to get buried in the avalanche of high heels. Some of those things are pretty sharp. I mean, I could die of a thousand stabs. But I mean, you know what? She, she buys, I don't know how much she gives from God. Please don't know. Tell me. Don't t do not tell me if you know how much shoes cost. I don't want to know. I'm assuming they all probably cost $10 a pair. Y'all giggling like my assumption is wrong. The Bible, the Bible doesn't say this, but ignorance is bliss. So I'm ignorant of how much some of that stuff costs. But you know what? I, I see. I see what happens. You know, she wears them for a little while. And, and you know what she does? She have a yard sale. And I know what they sell for at the yard sale. $1.25. 
That's on the first day. But the second day, it's 25. Just get them out of here. Would you take these shoes? Six months before, they were the pride and joy of her buggy as she came out of Target. Can I tell you, why don't you just try one pair of shoes for all year and say, there's people in my world that don't have shoes. I can, I can wear these another, another week, another month, another year. I can wear them. And, and, and I'll, give, I'll give my shoe budget to the building fund at Inland Lighthouse. And let's see what happens. Because there's going to be people just like these men that I preached about. They're going to come in here with nothing. And their God, God is going to transform them into blessing machines if I can say it that way they're going to become conduits uh, that the blessings of God can flow through can I preach to somebody here God's looking for somebody in this room tonight to bless you to have more money than you know what to do with he wants to bless you to the level where you can come to pastor and say pastor whatever your heart is to do do it let's get it done I said it I said at the lunch table and I'm going to tell you all this because I know these people are going to have a hard time believing it. I sat at lunch with the same two men that I'm testifying about. I sat at lunch with them just a couple of weeks ago. And we sat there and we were talking about Peak. They loved Peak. They went for the first time last year. And they said, we're so excited. We can't wait. We've already got hotels reserved in Houston. And that's exactly what I said. Oh, I'm sorry. You're going to have to change your destination. We're going to have to go back to Tulsa. Not that Tulsa is so bad, but, you know, it was just good to have everything at one place. And they enjoyed it. And they said, why are we having to go back? I said, money. Now, we're talking about two young men that God has started opening the windows of heaven and pouring it out in their life. They didn't, they didn't stutter. They didn't give me a 25-year church history. All they said, they looked at me and said, why didn't somebody say something? Unbeknownst to me, what is the baseball field right there? Tropicana something in Houston? I don't know the name of it. I think it's Tropicana Field. I don't know. Somebody might can Google it so I'm not telling you the wrong information. But what? Huh? Minute Maid. I knew it was something to do with orange juice. I was pretty close. I was in the same. I was, had the right color anyway, the right fruit. So you know what happened? While these two men are there, we're talking about men that hadn't been in church but a couple of years or less. And, and, and they're still learning. They're still going. They, don't, they ain't got it all figured out. They're still, they're still walking through it wide-eyed. But this is how wide-eyed they are. God has been pouring the blessings out in their life, and they're just leaving the hose open. They're like, why cut it off? Just let it flow. This is what these two new converts did. They went by, what was it? Minute Maid Park. They went by Minute Maid Park and said, man, what would it look like to have that entire stadium full of apostolic young people? Nobody coached them. Nobody talked them to them about it. That was just their young mind. And I know they're going to grow out of it. They're going to get like some of y'all. Y'all get, to, oh, we don't need that. Why would we want to go to a baseball stadium to, to have church? I'm telling you, it's time for us to start taking the things back that the world has had too long. Why can't we fill up Minute Maid Park with apostolic young people? We can, but we just got to believe it. There ain't but one thing stopping it, and that is we've got the hose kinked. Our mind is blocked. We can't conceive it. I'm going to tell you, if you can conceive it, God can give birth to it. It'll happen if you can believe it. Somebody needs to have faith in this room tonight. Whatever you want your blessings to be, as you get that card, you got that card in your hand, you get a pen in your hand right now, and we're about to pray. I'm going to have Bishop Booker come to this microphone, and he's going to pray before you write it in. And I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you let the Holy Ghost talk to you. I'm not going to tell you what to write on it. Only thing I'm asking you to do is every single person that's in this room, I want you to to have a card and I want you to put something on it. By faith you're going to put an amount on it. Somebody said well, what happens Brother Riley if I lose my job? Well I don't think y'all don't have the Gestapo here that's policing everybody and going to go haul them off to the gulag if they don't pay their no. 
We, you, you know, we're not telling you to lie intentionally, but if you have good faith, by faith, you're going to write a number on that card that you want to give monthly or you want to give a, a lump sum. It, it's fine to be, do both. You may have, you may have a million dollars sitting in your account right now that, that needs to be spent somewhere so the IRS don't come knocking on your door. Let me tell you something. We're a 501c3 and we're fully taxed. Right? I had to stop and make sure. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's deductible. You can give all you want, and it'll be a blessing to the kingdom of God, and we'll start breaking ground tomorrow. Pastor's already said, I'm thinking maybe by January of 24, we'll have a million, and I'll be ready to take the next step. Let me, we're going to take that step tonight. We're going to take that step tonight. Anybody going to back me up? You going to unkink the hose tonight? The only thing holding us up is a commitment. Are you ready to make that commitment? You said earlier you were. Now it's down to where it is. How much of a blessing do you want to be? Well, I want to be as much of a blessing as I can. you got to start somewhere. And it, God always rewards sacrifice. You know, how would you like to went to church with Jesus? His seat in the house was by the offering plate. Wasn't it not? He sat there and he watched people as they come and drop their offering in. He was watching them. Y'all try that sometimes. That'll, make, that'll get folks' feathers ruffled up. Jesus didn't care. He was watching them. He was watching them as they came up and he was watching them go out. And because he was God manifest in the flesh, he knew how much money they had. They come up, they dropped a big check in there. He just kind of shrugged and watched them walk out. There was a little lady, a little widow come in the back. And she was trying not for anybody to see her. She was felt embarrassed, but she, she wanted to be blessed. And she wanted to contribute. And all she had was some widow's mites. She came up and she hoped nobody would notice and she tried to put it in the plate without it making noise. But Jesus was watching. And when she turned to walk out, she was going out. Jesus said, hey, hey, hey. And he got the attention of his disciples. And he said, you see that lady? She gave more than all of the others. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. We heard the coins when they hit the bottom of the plate. We also seen what the other rich people were given. We know that her contribution didn't add up to what theirs was God said you're looking at it wrong you're seeing this completely through the wrong lens you're looking at what they left and I'm looking what they took out you see those wealthy men have lots of money left but the little lady she gave her all so don't let anybody despise you whenever you can't give a hundred thousand or ten thousand or a thousand. Maybe all you can commit is ten dollars. Can I tell you your ten dollars is as important as somebody's ten thousand dollars? This is not about making big eyes and little use. That's why we're not calling these pledges out openly because we're not trying, we're not trying to make heroes and we're not trying to make people embarrassed. We're trying to let you give whatever your faith will let you give. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I don't care. I, I don't know why I feel drawn to this, Pastor, but I really feel drawn to it. There are people in here that are embarrassed about what they know they can give. And God don't want you to be embarrassed. He wants you to give your 16 cents and see what he'll do with your 16 cents. Come on, you got to get out of that mentality. As long as you got that mentality, you're never going to be blessed. It's going to keep you from being blessed. But if you'll commit into the hands of God, whatever it is you have, God will open the windows of heaven. It's not about how much it is. It's the value. Some folks, it's no problem to drop $100 for another person. That's, that's, a, matter, that's a matter of eating or not. We're not trying to take your kid's milk money. We're not trying to leave you without. That's not what God's plan does. God's plan does not fleece people. God's plan does not rob people. But I'm going to tell you, if you got it and you're willing to commit it in faith, you will not ever, ever, ever go 
empty handed. You just got to keep the supply line open. Now some of you need to open it. Some of you need to open the hose tonight. Tonight needs to be the first night that you give sacrificially. Tonight needs to be the night, not for show, not that somebody can say, oh, brother, so-and-so, they gave a big lump. That's not what this is about. But you need to give sacrificially. Sacrificially may be a commitment of $5 a week or $10 a month or 100 I don't know. I'm not trying to put thoughts in your mind. But I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is wanting to put some faith in everybody in this room right now. God is wanting to speak to you a number. God is wanting to tell you, if you'll give this much, if you'll commit to this much, I will. I will. I'm going to tell one story. And Bishop, I want you to be ready to come pray. We had a retired couple that came in in our revival. By the way, it was with Jacob Phillips. During the pandemic, our church grew by 150. So Jacob Phillips is coming in a few weeks. You're going to have an evangelist that can, he's, he's a harvester. He knows how to get it. You can have faith. That man will preach and he will, there will be a result. All you got to do is get him in the house. I know he's probably already preached here. But you, it's, it's, to me, I don't see how you could do any better. But here, here's, here's what happened with this retired couple. They were retired. They were both, uh, one, he was military and she was an educator. They retired, real, real, not, not anything elaborate, not great, not great investment. They, they were just average, real average retired people. And, and they had been in the Southern Baptist in the Southern Baptist um, uh, denomination for many years, they had went on many, many missions trips, the Southern Baptists. Their, their kids, grandkids started coming to our church and started getting the Holy Ghost. These two very distinguished people, educated people, very, very, um, you know, just good people. And they came... And that first, he sat there with his Bible on his lap. And every time we'd say something, he'd, you could see, you hear the pages just to go in. He'd be going to look it up. And he was chasing everything down. And he'd say, Pastor, everything you preached tonight was in the book. Well, guess what? He showed up one night, and the Holy Ghost showed up, and he left talking in tongues. He said, I guess I'm a Baptocostal. <laughs> Whatever that is. I don't know what it is, but that's what he said. But the other night, we have, we, every once a month, we have a men's prayer meeting and, and, and a fellowship. You see what that hose does naturally? You have to work at it to keep the kings out of it. Help me. Somebody help me. I can't let my... Thank you. He came and he said, we wanted to give. We wanted to give more than we ever gave. And he said, when we moved to Laurel... We didn't know, but we bought a house out in the, out in the community, out in, not, there's not suburbs, there's, they're just, I don't know what they are, not sub anything, they're just out in the country, and a nice little brick house, and he said, one day I got a call, he said, I answered the call, and said, the people said, my name is so-and-so, and, -so and I, we represent such-and-such -such oil company, and we want to talk to you about dividends. He said, goodbye. And he hung the phone up. He said, a minute later, phone rang again, picks it up. Sir, this is so-and-so. I'm with the, I told you I'm not interested in whatever scam you're peddling. Now, I can go through this whole long story, and it takes a minute for me to tell it all. But it, finally, he listened to the people. They were about to start drilling an oil well across the road from his house. And they said, our records say that you have one of the very few people in this area, you own the mineral rights to your property. And he said, you know what? All of a sudden we realized that God was opening a door for us to continue to support mission and continue to give and to do more. You know what? They went from being a person with a fixed income. I'm saying that to some of you in here that think you're on a fixed income. Whenever God gets ready to bless you, he'll let all start bubbling through the ground next to your house. <laughs> he said... 
He said, Pastor, it's so noisy. So noisy. We took some of the money that we get from our oil wells. We bought an RV. And we just went to the lake while all the noise was going on. That's the kind of blessing that God can do for people with a fixed income if you'll keep the hose open. If you'll keep the supply line open, God will make a way for you to be blessed. Uh, Even when the government says it's capped, when everything says there's no way. Bishop, somebody give Bishop another microphone. Give him a microphone. We're going to pray. I want everybody in this room to take your card. Get your card. Get your card in your hand. Get your card in your hand. And I want you to hold that in your hand. If you got a pen, get that pen in your hand. Bishop Booker is about to pray. And as he's praying, I want you to let the Holy Ghost give you a number. A number by faith that you'll stretch a little bit. I, want you, I don't want you just to give what you know you can. Well, I can do without one Starbucks so I can, I can make it. I can give that five, seven dollars. Man, they went up. And, and I can do without that. And so I'm going to do it. Don't do anything silly like that. But do something that will, that, will, that will have benefit and weight to it whenever you give it. It's not the amount you give, but what it means to you. Let's pray. He's going to pray. And everybody, everybody ask the Lord, speak to me what you want me to give tonight. Just before I pray. I know what it is. To be sitting in services. My wife and I sitting together. And being so strapped. And wanting to give so bad. I remember one night we had nothing in. The only thing I had was a watch my wife had bought for me. And I put the watch in the offering because it's all we had. But I will tell you, it is impossible to outgive God. Lord Jesus. You see these dear people. And God, we belong to you. And those that are here that do not belong to you, we're claiming them for you. We want the building built, but God, we want it full of your glory. And we want it full of souls. And we want to see churches all over this Inland Empire. And we want this church to be a sea of Galilee that can feed the kingdom of God throughout this world. (laughs) We need your help. We need your mind. We need your spirit. We need your anointing. We need just to hear your voice. You still small, sweet, beautiful voice. The woman came, she broke the box, people complained, and Jesus said, let her alone. She hath done what she could help us to do, to walk what we can, and maybe what we cannot, but we're going to walk with you because we're walking through this life one time. In Jesus' name, lay your hand on all of us by your grace and glory. Let's all pray right now together, Lord Jesus.
Come on, why don't you lift your voice and be thankful. God has confirmed his word tonight. Why don't you stand to your feet and lift your voice in praise and adoration for the confirmation. God's given you a guarantee. Not only did he give you the preach word, he used the gifts of the spirit to confirm it. Come on, be thankful right now. Come on, there's a great, great, great harvest coming to this city. You're going to give birth to it now. Your generosity is going to do it. According to your faith, so be it. Whatever you'll expand your borders to receive, God will pour it into your containers. Come on. Come on. Open it up. Let it come. Let it flow into your life. Come on, let the Holy Ghost speak to you right now. What would you have me to give? What would you have me to commit? Jesus. 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 Come on, don't say no. Come on, open up your spirit to receive what God is saying. Come on, God is, God is doing it right now. You're receiving the instruction. Come on, come on, let the Holy Ghost speak to you when you get it. Come on, as the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and you get the number and you get your card filled out, I want you to bring it down here and lay it on the altar. Come on. Come on, come quick. And whenever you lay it, step back so others can get here. Come on, as God is speaking to you, as it's being spoken. Come on, those of you that are in the tabulating group, come on, grab them. Let's get them. Come on, bring them, bring them. Come on, don't stop worshiping. Don't start loving God. If you lay it here, you stay in the presence of God. People are still receiving. People are still getting direction come on don't don't fill the card out till you know what God wants you to do don't be hesitant by faith make a commitment come on let's stay in this presence come on let's stay in this atmosphere hallelujah 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 come on we're going to have a great victory tonight we're going to have a great victory tonight and you're going to be the reason. God is going to bless you to be a great victory. You're going to be the great victory of this city that we're serving the devil notice tonight. We're not just talking about revival. We're making room for revival. We're going to, we're going to take the necessary steps. I'm going to commit. I'm going to do it and God's going to bless you and God's going to bless the kingdom and revival is going to be in this area. This whole region is going to be impacted. Not just Rialto, but every surrounding city, every church that this church is spawning, every church that this church is connected to is going to be blessed. Come on, keep coming. Come on, make an avenue. Make a way for people to get in. Come on, thank you for giving. Thank you for making a commitment. Come on, keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Don't miss out on this great opportunity. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, say yes to the Lord. Say yes to the call of God. Say yes to this opportunity. Say yes. Yes, God. I want to be a part of the next level revival that you're going to do it in the lighthouse. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
don't be embarrassed don't feel like what you're given is the little little is much when God is in it God can put his favor on you and your family and your life pray all across this altar there's still people that are coming there's people that are still coming the Holy Ghost is talking to our hearts right now oh God They're going to begin to gather these up right now. But I want us to pray all across this place. And there's still people that are coming. You take your time. The Holy Ghost is moving. But I want us to begin to pray together. Pray as a church family. Pray as families. Pray as brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, it's up on the screen right there. It's, it's not just about that building. But it's what about what that building represents. And it represents souls. It represents God's kingdom going forward. It represents God giving dominion and power in this area. I want us to begin to pray one for another right now. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. God, make us what you want us to be. Oh, lift your voice and let's pray together. That's it. Come on, there's a deep move of the Holy Ghost right now.
on, the Holy Ghost is moving right now. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. Come on, there's some young people that can catch a hold of some things that will change you. Change your destination. Change your future. Change the way you look at the work of God. Come on, let's pray together right now. Oh, Come on, there's some young marriage that God wants to change the way you look at the kingdom of God. Oh, God. Come on, God wants to change the way we look at his kingdom. That's it, pray in the Holy Ghost. Oh, God. Let God speak to your heart. Let God enlarge your heart right now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, come on, God wants to give some people some vision. Hey, this can heal your marriage. This can heal your home. Seek ye first the kingdom. Oh, seek ye first the kingdom. Oh, that's it. Come on. The Holy Ghost is moving deep. It's calling underneath.
The Holy Ghost is moving. We're going to continue to pray. They are uh, in the office. My wife's the church secretary, Sister Nancy, Brother Adam Pierce, Brother Gavin Barry are in there, and they're, they're uh, tabulating the numbers right now. And if, you, if folks, if you need to go, um, we understand, but they'll they'll be putting that together, and we'll be telling you where we're at. Sister Carmen's getting ready to get baptized in Jesus' name. But the Holy Ghost is here. They're going to begin to sing a song here in just a moment. And I just want us again just to kind of flow with what the Holy Ghost is doing. If you're with your family, if you're where you can get with husbands and wives, get with your kids. And again, as you know, this is a church family. If you don't have family in church, adopt somebody. Don't wait for them to adopt you. You adopt them. If you see somebody that needs a church, that needs a family, adopt them. Just grab them. And we're going to pray again together. Oh, the Holy Ghost is in this place. Hallelujah.